Swamps inspire fear in many minds. Dark and damp, they are full of mystery and creatures that slither in the mud. An experienced guide entered Louisiana's Honey Island Swamp one fall day in 1973. The outing would become the stuff nightmares are made of. Normally, the trek held few terrors for the guide. Even the lethal alligator was rarely a problem for an experienced outdoorsman. The guide would discover something else lurking in these quiet waters, something that struck his boat. that an unknown creature lives on the edge of man's civilized world? The Honey Island Swamp is only an hour's drive from New Orleans. Once entered, however, it is the forest primeval. Deep within the Honey Island Swamp, a creature described as half man, half beast has been tracked. For the hunter, as well as the hunted, the search is a dangerous game. This series presents information based in part on theory and conjecture. The producer's purpose is to suggest some possible explanations, but not necessarily the only ones, to the mysteries we will examine. There is a land of endless winter where the air is thin and clean, with peaks soaring five miles high to form the icy roof of the world, the Himalayas. The nomad Sherpas who tend their flocks on harsh alpine meadows believe they are not alone in the wilderness. They know the mountains are gods and that the gods have spawned good and evil spirits who keep watch from the highest crags. The most frightening of these spirits is the man-beast the Sherpa call Yeti. Western men call him the abominable snowman. Abominable because legend says he kills those foolish enough to enter his frozen world. Sir Edmund Hillary had heard of the abominable snowman, but along with Sherpa Tenzing Norke, he challenged the elements and the unknown to scale Mount Everest in 1953. Hillary would bravely return years later to search for the monster, but would find nothing. Other places in the world have secrets to tell, and there are other men fascinated by mystery. One such place is America's Pacific Northwest. One such man is Peter Byrne. Like the Himalayas, this is a high and lonely land, as yet unvanquished by the steady surge of humanity called progress. Byrne once hunted game in the foothills of the Himalayas, where he became fascinated with accounts of the Yeti. Now he roams the Northwest, substituting camera for gun, in search of another man-like beast, Bigfoot. Men of strong character have challenged this wilderness before. In 1924, a group of rugged miners staked a claim near Mount St. Helens in Washington State. They reported that early one morning, they were attacked by giant rock-throwing beasts. The battle lasted hours. The miners thought they had killed one of the creatures, but no trace was ever found. Bigfoot and the abominable snowman have much in common. 
Perhaps Bigfoot migrated here across the ancient land bridge that once joined Asia with North America. A world away from the mountains is the urbane and colorful city of New Orleans. Yet less than 40 miles from the Superdome, concrete and steel give way again to wilderness. Called Honey Island Swamp, 27,000 acres of sluggish streams, still ponds, and dense subtropical forest make up another of the world's great remaining primitive areas. Life on the edge of this vast Mississippi Delta bayou seems prosaic enough, with comfortable old homes punctuating lush farmland. In the little towns and farmhouses, however, stories are exchanged about a creature said to lurk deep within the swamp. Few outsiders ever hear them, perhaps for good reason. Ted Williams farms a small plot of land near Honey Island. He also traps muskrat and mink. One day, it appeared he'd been trapped himself. First time I ever saw it, it was standing plumb still like a stump. Went on a trap line, and I, I stopped after I realized it wasn't a stump. I knew it wasn't supposed to be there. And it run. When I stopped, it run. It was a dark, dark gray, about seven foot high. And it jumped a bow. That's the first sight I ever saw. Well, the next time I seen them, was they swimming the river, two of them. And they, one of them was bigger than the other, and one of them was faster than the other, and they swim just like a human. They long, them long, overhand strokes. I tried to get one of them to look at me, and the other one ran off and got out of the way, and the other one never would look at me. And I could have shot it, but I wouldn't do it on account it wouldn't look at me. It looked too much like a human to me. Broad shoulders, with arms hang down below its knees. The hands looked almost like a human. Well, I don't like to talk about it because people don't, don't believe what you say, what you've seen. And I don't like to be called a liar. Nobody do. There are those who scoff at Ted Williams and say his story is beyond belief, beyond comprehension. The swamp is undeniably vast, however, and still largely unexplored. It could hide an incredible secret for a very long time. Ted Williams is not the only one to confess seeing something frightening in the swamp. While some still prefer to keep quiet, others have begun a systematic search for the creature. At this time, we're well within the interior of Honey Island Swamp. And you can tell by our surroundings here, it's a pretty desolate area. This is one of the main spots here that we're at now. Uh, when we came through going to the camp and we first encountered this creature was in this very area right here. Harlan Ford is a retired air traffic controller who has lived near the swamp for 20 years. Going to the camp, pitching through this ravine right here is where we found where it had been leading off of this ridge, coming right through this little ravine bottom on this wet ground. And this is where we first found its tracks, and it was watering about 50 yards over at this creek over here. And at no time did we find any tracks where it had gone in the water. But once it would get to this water's edge, just as a bear would do or something, then I guess it would let down to drink. And that's when we would find the heavy clawed front feet of, of this uh, creature. One evening late, just about dusk dark, a uh, friend of mine, uh, we encountered eyes. <laughs> They were yellow or amberish colored, real wide apart. So this friend of mine, Jim Hartzog, he took a gun, went into this area and uh, to try to kill whatever it was. And uh, he says that he came face to face with this thing. It looked something like uh, eight, about seven foot tall. And he fired on it with using a headlight. But he said when he did, the eyes went out. Well, uh, probably what happened, it turned and ran, and uh, he shot at it one more time, and uh, 
So, but we went back the next day and checked for sign and blood, but we didn't find any. So we figured Jim missed it that night. The last uh, sign that we've had or anybody has had of this creature, and this is within the last four months, was on the sandbar where the thing crossed the river, crossed the sandbar and left footprints on it. That was found by a member of the Louisiana Wildlife Fish Commission. And that's been the very last contact we've had with it in this area. Men are hunting the creature with guns. It seems unlikely the next encounter will be a peaceful one. If finally cornered, what will the creature do? Honey Island Swamp has been largely ignored by men and seemingly forgotten by time. Monster hunter Harlan Ford is among those who believe a prehistoric relative of man may have been isolated here ages ago, developing in its own way, unmolested by the winds of evolutionary change. Ford is pressing his search deeper into the swamp. He's walking where a few men before him have gone. Traditional scientists have largely ignored the reports of monster sightings. Ford hopes to come up with evidence that will change their minds. A track, obviously fresh. It resembles nothing that is known to inhabit the swamp. Clearly, the track was not made by a man. Ford believes he must move deeper still into the swamp. Darkness is approaching, however, and Ford is a prudent man. The tracks ascribed to the monster give Louisiana state naturalist George Stevens a clue to its size. From what we can find out, from the tracks we've uh, found in the in the woods, uh, I would say that he's about well, from the young to the old. Uh, it's hard to estimate how how large the young are, but uh, if something like this has a 10 or 12 inch track, and uh, if he uh, puts enough weight on that track to bury in the sand or the mud so deep, then you can estimate something about what he might weigh. So I'd say. A full-grown male adult probably would weigh better than 400 pounds, stand about seven, maybe eight feet tall, and be almost completely covered with hair. A frightening picture, but it will take more than plaster casts of three-toed webbed feet to convince the skeptical. Michael Nahi has his own ideas of what the monster might look like. Nahi is a professional makeup artist in New Orleans. He was commissioned to study the available evidence on the creature and devise a model to match eyewitness accounts. The feet were constructed to exactly match one recent set of tracks. The face mask couldn't be as accurate. It does, however, match the descriptions of several eyewitnesses. We still don't know where the creature came from, how it has avoided man for so long, or how it survives in the hostile world of Honey Island Swamp. If a man can survive in the bayou without tools or fire, it follows that a man-like creature can. Major Gavin Storter is an army ranger and specialist in swamp survival. We challenged him to spend some time in the bayou and evaluate his chances of lasting very long. As long as you can overcome your fear of it and uh, try to understand what's there, you usually have very little problems as far as the uh, food sources go or negotiating, moving, or anything else in it. The biggest thing I would be concerned with would be the, uh, the plant life. Um, what plants would, uh, could afford me an obstacle uh, or would afford me an obstacle should I uh, have to uh, move around or try to move around after dark? 
I would also uh, look for food sources, both animal and uh, plant life, and the uh, feasibility of, of catching animals. To live and remain healthy, you would have to spend almost all waking hours, just like an animal, gathering food. Most of the plant life is edible, if you can get it past your mouth. There's palm hearts, which are very good, very tasty. There's uh, a lot of lily-type plants that have large roots that are very edible. Tastes a lot like radishes or turnips. If the swamp monster does exist, it must have had a long time to adapt to its environment. Major Storter's experience suggests that the creature would be omnivorous, including everything from ants to leaves to large animals in its diet. It is clear that only with great cunning and strength could a large creature endure very long. As far as the insect life goes, there would be a lot of uh, insects that uh, could be eaten. And animals are in abundance, uh, both turtles, snakes, uh, possums, armadillos that uh, could be captured and eaten. Major Storter teaches that a man's inhibitions can be overcome, that whatever he needs for basic survival is available to him in the swamp. The monster would have no problem with squeamishness. It would, however, have to roam the swamp almost constantly in search of its next meal, and would be roaming even now. The incessant need to hunt might explain the creature's apparently aggressive behavior. There are other large predators with which the monster would have to compete for food. It is difficult to imagine, however, that a creature supposedly eight feet tall and cunning enough to outwit humans would have natural enemies. Man alone seems capable of posing a serious threat to a creature as clever and aggressive as this one is supposed to be. Men are clever and aggressive too. The threat becomes more real as interest in the swamp mystery increases. Nature's balance is delicate. So far, however, only a few men have penetrated deep into Honey Island Swamp. Man and monster are not in direct competition for food. It is possible to assume that as men slowly encroach on the swamp, these legendary creatures will be in retreat. There are those who have reason to believe that someday, someone will get hurt. My wife and I were all uh going on a fishing trip about four years ago. And about nine o'clock that night, well, I heard this peculiar noise that screamed out down the river, I'd say, a half a mile away. Perry Ford and his wife were about to spend the most terrifying night of their lives. My wife wanted me to build a fire, so uh, I was out gathering up wood, you know, to, to build a big fire for her. And, uh, it screamed again. This time it was closer. I'd say it was uh, maybe 300 yards from us this time. This really, really scared her, and it scared me. I tried not to let her know it scared me, you know, but uh, so I went ahead and kept on building fires. And uh, less than 10 minutes later, it squalled again. And this time it was right on top of us, you know. almost shook the leaves off the trees. Who or 
what was it that terrorized the Fords that night in the swamp? No one really knows. If we are on a collision course, man and monster, then it will be tragic for both. It would be a pity if it took such a tragedy to finally solve the mystery of the Honey Island Monster. <coughs> Mankind may have evolved from a swamp like this eons ago. Perhaps we left the part of ourselves behind. I know what I saw, and I know what we got on. And since then, we don't sleep in that camp without a nylon rope on the door or without a loaded gun. Uh, from my standpoint, uh, I'll relate it just like it is. And if people believe it, they believe it. If they don't, they don't. We can't control what people think. But whatever it is, it's still in there. You can take and walk in there today, and uh, and where you walk at today in there, I would say that there's spots in there no man has ever walked on before. It's that remote. And therefore, that whatever this is that exists, I don't say it's a monster, I don't know what it is, but whatever this is, if it uh, prowls and continues to prowl at night in a swamp area this huge, it could stay in there another two or three hundred years and not be uh, located. It is easier to explain the existence of a hitherto unknown creature in Honey Island Swamp than to understand the apparent indifference of scientists to evidence and eyewitness accounts. What is needed is a thorough, objective search for the man-like creature that has been reported here. It will not further our progress to turn our backs on what may well be our past.